The authors present a technique guide for percutaneous fixation of medial femoral condyle OCD lesions. Here are disclosures. An 18-year-old male collegiate soccer player presented with six months of right medial knee pain, worse with kicking and running. He did not improve with conservative management. Physical exam findings were significant for pain and full extension. Radiographs demonstrated lucency in the medial femoral condyle. An MRI from an outside facility corroborated these findings and suggested the presence of an OCD lesion with evidence of bone loss and underlying bony sclerosis indicating a possible unstable lesion. After consultation, the decision was made to proceed with arthroscopic surgery. Following diagnostic arthroscopy, the medial femoral condyle lesion was evaluated while viewing from the standard lateral portal. This lesion demonstrated micro-instability while arranging motion. While viewing from the medial portal, an arthroscopic freer elevator was used to mobilize the chondral tissue. An arthroscopic freer elevator was used to assess the level of instability and demonstrated that the mobile fragment was attached at the anterior edge, creating a trapdoor lesion. An arthroscopic shaver and curettage was used to prepare the surface of the lesion. We then proceeded to pin the fragment by introducing a small K wire through the transpatellar portal. The fragment was then drilled and tapped perpendicular to the surface of the lesion. A mini headless compression screw was then inserted and tightened into the fragment. A second screw was inserted into the fragment and the stability of the lesion was evaluated. Synovitic tissue in the medial compartment was removed. A needle was inserted into the undersurface of the lesion and platelet-rich plasma was injected to facilitate wound healing. Platelet-rich plasma was harvested and prepared during the procedure and injected in between the fragment and the medial femoral condyle cartilage edge. In addition, bone graft or bone putty may be used in cases where there is a large osteochondral defect. During the 10 to 12 week interval, patients were placed on toe touch weight bearing restrictions for the first six weeks, followed by weight bearing as tolerated for the following six weeks. The previously fixed condyle lesion was evaluated and probed to check if it was stable. And a small K wire was used to find the center of each of the headless screws, and then a screwdriver was utilized to remove each of the screws. Finally, the stability of this lesion was evaluated through full range of motion of the knee. Due to the presence of adhesions, a three-compartment synovectomy was then performed. The fragment was finally probed to demonstrate stability. The patient is partial weight-bearing for six weeks post-op and weight-bearing is tolerated thereafter. After this, range of motion was then progressed. After hardware removal, the patient then began strengthening exercises and was able to return to sport six months following surgery. Initial study demonstrated that 12 knees with medial femoral condyle stable OCD lesions were successfully able to be fixed arthroscopically with bioabsorbable pins. A similar technique in pediatric population with open physis also demonstrated successful outcomes, but a failure rate of 23%. More recently, internal fixation of unstable OCD lesions found successful outcomes up to five years postoperatively and no significant differences in failure or survival or subjective outcomes between skeletally mature and skeletally immature patients.